Tenaketa YouTube. So we're looking at uh, looking at this piece today, and um, how we're going to lash this and turn it into something that looks like this. Um, not sure. I've always heard this called a ring bolt lashing. Um, I looked up a ring bolt lashing. It looks a little bit different, but. Um, for now, we're going to we're going to go with ring bolt lashing. If anyone knows it by another, I'd be interested to hear. Um, so yeah, let's have a look at how we go about transforming this into that. So I got this. Uh, it's called a hobby vice. Um, from Mitre Ten or some basic hardware shop, and it makes doing this uh, this lashing really easy. Um, you can adjust it down the bottom here and um, turn this piece all over the place. Um, yeah, it's pretty awesome. So, um, first thing you need, because you're going to be placing out both ends from here um, with, your, with your cord. Um, I start with one meter. So this piece here is one meter long, which is going to go through the end. Here's the two ends um, in half, so that's what, 50, 50 centimeters for each each side there. Um, I find that's a, that's a good length for plashing um, for most size heads. There's a couple of big heads out there which that won't fit, but um, if you know you're making something for someone with a big head, then um, yeah, add a little bit extra on. Now, for this next bit, this bit, this next cord needs to go all the way from here, because it's the third um, line for the plait here, to all of the, the lashing, the knots through here, and then be the third cord out the other side. So, to be on the safe side, we can do two meters for that. Yeah, it's about a meter. You don't quite need two meters. But for your first time, it's better to have too much than not enough because if you don't have enough, by the time you get to the end, you're going to have to start all over again and undo your work. So it's definitely really good to do that. So I'm just lining up now this third one with the length of these other ones so that it's coming out the same length. Right, now I'm going to place that carefully so it doesn't get adjusted. And we can start our work. So this one here is the one that's going to be plaited. And this here is our long rest of everything else. Now, our first knot is just like a simple overhand knot. Make the loop and drop it down through. The start and the end of these, this is the trickiest bit. Where's it gone? I'm going to start that again. Okay, so I'm going to go around the back of that one and pull it through. Like so. Now you want to do one more knot through that same hole here. We went around it that way and we're coming down. So we're going to go back through the same side this time. So I'm going to go back through here. If, if the hole's not quite big enough, you need can pull the uh, cords out, <coughs> slide it through, go all the way through. So once you're through, you don't want to pull it all the way through. When it gets down nice and small, you want to come back up through the loop. So that's the long way to do it. it. Picks you up. We don't want to pick you up. Okay, keep that one snug and tighten him up. Okay, so those two there are the trickiest. We want to keep them nice and nice and tight and snug. Now we went through that way that time, so we're going to go back through on the second hole, back through the opposite way. So from here, you 
alternate which ways you're going through. Now we did two knots in the first one, and we're going to do three in each hole from now on. So that's one. Two. Three. Okay. So I'll get another one here as an example. <laughs> So you can see one of those knots kind of, that's what we're making. Yeah, that's a pretty average shot there. Okay, so that is three lines coming down, and two half inches, two link linking together, and one off on the other side. That's what we're making at the moment. So that's the first one done. Now, you do want to try and keep tension on this, um, particularly when you're going between holes. And if that bit gets saggy, it can um, loosen up the whole knot. This part here is pretty secure now at the start, so we can we don't have to worry about that one too much. Now, so I'm keeping tension with this hand here. We'll talk through it in a bit more detail this time. Okay. So before I put the thread through the hole, I grab this end with the tension and I put the loop over the top like so. Okay, so that way. When I've got the thread through, I'm already putting it through the hole, this loop, this hole here that I've made, to make the make the hitch. Okay. Now I'll swap hands, so I'm holding with my right hand now. Make that loop at the start. Thread through the loop and pull it through. And tight. Okay, so I do that every time. Make the loop, find the end. And through we go. So that one bounced over the top there. For this last one, I find it's really important to make sure it's sitting on the, the far side. Maybe just the way I'm sitting. But yeah, it seems to be a little trick that keeps happening to me. Alright. So that's what we want to be doing. Going that way. The last one, third one on this side. Yeah, that one bounced over as well. Here we go. Alright, so three holes in. Okay, I'm going to fast forward it now. Um, through up to about the end, so... If you want to see the technique again, you can go back and watch these ones here, but you don't need to see me do this over and over. Okay, so welcome back to the final two holes. Um, something I like to do near the end of this um, is just trim the end of my cord because the wax I guess frayed out there and the wax doesn't um, hold it together as well for threading through. So I do it on a bit of an angle so it's sharper. Can help uh, just with the threading on these last couple 
can get a bit tricky. So this last one, the second last one here is just like all the others. For those of you wondering, I use a Zircon branded braid, polyester waxed braid. Um, this is one millimeter, one millimeter size. I get it from a website called Cordwell, C-A-U-D-W-E-L-L co.nz I think. It's a New Zealand website, so if you're overseas, you might be able to find something similar somewhere there. Okay, so for this last hole, before I get into it, I'm going to get the other two um, links that are going to be the three plat. Okay, so get that off my roll. I'll thread that one through separately. Okay, so that's nice and even there. And we'll lay that off to the side. Now, same on this end. Instead of doing three, we're going to just like on this end, we're going to do two, and then we'll be ready for doing our plaiting, doing our three plait on the end. And which way is that? Okay, so it's that way. Right, now we'll see if we can get through there with that other one there. So it can be a bit trickier. So what I'm going to do is pull that tight to open up the gap. There we go. Right, first one's through. The second one, the smallest gap. Right, we got it. Now I'm going to have to come, make sure I come back, back through the hole. Okay, so then I start the plaiting from this end. Now, oh, I just adjusted that. Wrong. Just checking it all the same, the right length now. Cool, we're at the right length now. So, like with any three plat, that's really dark there, isn't it? It's a better spot. Like with any three plat, and the start needs to be quite tight, um, so it doesn't start unraveling. And I'm just starting to plat straight on top of what was there already, making sure these first ones are nice and tight to keep them secure. Now, if you're not sure about how to do a three plat. Uh, I've got a video that shows you how to do that too. Um, I'll add a link on the video. It should be popping up at the top now. Um, and I'll also put it in the comments so you can check that out. There's, there's heaps of uh, resources on how to do a three plat online too. So, so now I'm just going to finish off the two necklace strands and do um, two whipping knots on them that will form a sliding knot. Um, and that will complete the whole process. Um, I won't go through how to do the, the sliding knots and all that sort of stuff as well because like the plaits I've also done a separate video on that which talks through that in detail so that will be popping up on the video screen about now and also in the comments as to right, so I'm just going to pause it now while I finish off the side of the of the three plat as I go off the screen. All right, so here's our first plated uh necklace cord. So I'll swap it over now. And you can see um, on this one here, show the lengths at the ends. Um, with that two meter length I had before, um, there's plenty left over for the plait. Well it is getting pretty close. 
So let's trim that off to the right length. Now starting tight. And away we go. All right, so here we go. Here's the other chords. So we've got two uh, nicely plated chords now. Okay, so let's look at doing the uh, the whippings for the sliding knots. So I'm gonna, I'm just gonna do this part. Um, <clears throat> if you want to see how to do it in a bit more detail. Then you need to check out my video that does that. Um, how to replace a necklace, or how to do sliding knots for a necklace cord. And um, you might need to check out the whipping video too, but it's on there. Um, so you go to the link that's popping up on the video now, or the one that's in the comments about how to do sliding knots. You can see in detail, step by step, what I'm doing here. First one's done there. Let's put that through. Good. Trim the ends off. And this is what we made, a little whipping knot with it going around the top there so it can slide. But uh it's still tight enough that it will hold its place, especially when there's two of them on there. Alright, let's get organised. The second one's a bit trickier. And the important part here, I'm not sure if I've mentioned this in my other video, is that when you're going to put this one, you want to loop it around here, like so, and then tie it on. But sometimes I have taken it back around and loop it back onto itself, which is an absolutely useless exercise, and means you have to start again. So just make sure you're paying attention when you're doing this, that you are um, attaching it to the right bit of cord. Okay. So I will use a different coloured piece of cord for the pull through this time. Can help with working out what's going on where. Okay. This one I always find is a balance of uh, making it tight so I won't come undone then loose enough so you can still pull it through because it is a pain trying to pull through the end here when it is when you've done a super tight whipping I've even broken cord a few times trying to pull it through when it was just too tight okay time for the pull through so I can grab all of that Right. 
and adjustment before we finally cinch it up. Good. There we go. There's our, uh, our lashing with our adjustable sliding cord. Hope that helped. It's enlightening, entertaining. Might be something to give a go in the future. Awesome. Thanks for watching everybody, Tina Koto, Tina Koto, Tina Koto Kato.